Hello and welcome back to Women's Football Talk, the YouTube channel that brings you all the latest news and stories from around the world of women's football. Today we are continuing with our WSL team previews and we are starting today with Brighton and Hove Albion. Now it's been a lot of changes at the South Coast Club this summer. They've got a new manager in Melissa Phillips in. A lot of players, the likes of Kaylee Green, Victoria Williams, Dan Carter have all left the club and they have brought in quite a lot of signings. Now obviously last season was fairly disappointing for uh, Brighton and Hove Albion, obviously surviving towards the end of the season and managerial changes didn't really help them throughout the season. Obviously Hope Powell leaving uh, back in October after they lost 8-0 and they just didn't really get going throughout a lot of last season. It took them a while to get going. Uh, but now I think they're in a good space. I've got a new manager. No worries about uh, that stuff. Players, they've got some good players in, in the squad uh, for this season. So I am very interested to see how they go. Obviously, they've made quite a lot of signings. Uh, bringing in Maria thoris Dottier, Nikki Everard in loan, on loan. Uh, another goalkeeper in Sophie Bagley. They've got uh, Vicky Lasada, Tatiana Pinto, Paulina Bremer. So it's been a lot of incomings uh, from Brighton. I think it was needed, obviously, with the amount of players that they let go this summer. Um, but I am really intrigued to see how this Brighton side plays uh, because on paper it's a much better side personally think, speaking it's much better than what it was last season uh, however obviously the quality of players doesn't guarantee you instant success they'll take time um, to get acclimatised to the league and uh, it's going to be interesting to see how Melissa Phillips plays out her style of play uh, with this Brighton team because obviously she was in the championship last season with London City Lionesses however she did leave just before the end of the season to head over to uh, the United States with Angel City I believe it was uh, before uh, coming back to England with Brighton and Hove Albion so I think this season as long as they don't get off to the same shaky start as last season, I think we'll see a much improved Brighton and Hove Albion side. That will be uh, climbing the table uh, better and finishing somewhere between, I would imagine, 5th and 8th would be a very good season for the Seagulls. A couple of players I'm really intrigued to see how they got on this season. Maria thoris can she stay fully fit? Obviously, her time at Manchester United, she had had a few injuries and missed, obviously, the back end of last season. Um, so, interested to see how she does in this Brighton um, defence. And then, how well does Paulina Bremer adapt to English football? Obviously, played many years over in Germany and, obviously, uh, how she can translate that to English football and can she provide the goals that will help move them up the table is going to be uh, quite key. And um, some of the Australian or the two Australian players that they've brought in, Mackenzie Hawksby and uh, Charlize Raw, I think those two are going to be very uh, interesting to see how they fit into English football because uh, Hawksby looks a really good player from what I've seen clips wise of her time in the A League. Um, before coming over to England she looks like a really promising player and I think that is one where we could be uh, a good little gem on the hands of Brighton and Hove Albion so that is definitely on one uh, to look out for over this next season and I think she will do really really well but overall I think um, yeah like I said much more stable looking Brighton this season than we had last season better quality players and I think as long as they don't struggle heading uh, at the start of the season then it's obviously going to be very key. A look at their opening couple of fixtures. They open up the season away to Everton and then a uh, couple of games against West Ham and Spurs uh, before finishing October with an away trip to Chelsea, which is obviously going to be um, a bit of an annoying game having Chelsea so early on the season because on loan keeper Nicky Everard won't be able to play in that game. So you would imagine it will be uh, Sophie Bagley that will start in that game. Um, maybe... Sophie Bagley may have the uh, chance to start ahead of Nikki Everard. It obviously remains to be seen, um, but you would imagine bringing in Nikki Everard on launch that she will be Melissa Phillips' uh, starting choice keeper. But obviously, that game beforehand, match day three against Tottenham Hotspur, that was the f uh, game last season, the first fixture between those two, that they got thumped 8 0 and uh, saw the end of Hope Powell's tenure at Brighton and Hove Albion so they'll be hoping that they can avoid a similar repeat this season but uh, for me personally I do think we'll see a much better uh, Brighton and Hove Albion and I wouldn't be surprised if they're moving a lot further away from the relegations and than what we saw from them last season. 
So that is my preview on Brighton and Hope Albion. Make sure you subscribe to the channel with the post notification bell turned on so you can see the rest of our previews of the 12 sides in the WSL. Make sure you're following us on Twitter and on Instagram for all the latest news and stories from around the world of women's football. And make sure you check out our podcast. We will have a full in-depth preview looking at the WSL season itself and all of the talking points from women's football. That will be in the top line of the description. And until next time, we'll see you soon. Thank you.